Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Inspiration for Today. You can see I have a great guest with me, and this is part of this week where we're trying to get to know and learn from other members of our own congregation. And, and Steve Hickerson, this, he is a fascinating guy, let me just tell you. Of course, that puts a lot of pressure on you when I say something like that. Oh, I got a lot of stories. <laughs> I know you do. So, Steve, let's start with this. Uh, you had a verse for us, as well as actually a great quote I wanted you to give. Um, the verse is something I've really centered in lately, especially. And what does the Lord require of you but to what? Do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6 8. And I've really made that because it's, it's like an application verse versus a theological. It really is. I, I, that is. That's a great verse. Actually, there was a Christian song on that. <laughs> oh, yes. So, but I didn't want to, you know, shatter the glass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what, one of the other things that you mentioned, you have a C.S. Lewis quote that's kind of a yeah. theme. Yeah, I use this for years. Uh, he's one of my favorite guys. Relying on God has to begin each day as if nothing yet has been done by me. <laughs> Could you just read that one more time? Because yeah. we I mean, ought to all think like this, I'm telling you. Relying on God has to begin each day, as if nothing yet has been done by me. I, it, just, it's good. I love C.S. Lewis also. And right. the things that he, I've been challenged many times in life. Yeah. But that's one of the things I appreciate about you, Steve, is that you are one who are, are not content just to where you're at, that you continue to read and grow. And uh, what have you been doing? What, what, what are some things in that realm that you could share with us that have been profitable for you? I've been here four and a half years. Uh, you were the first one I met in February, uh, four and a half plus years ago, and said, come to Laguna Woods, the church. So we did. And um, my wife had had a stroke and was uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So we wanted to move down here, Orange County. We have three married kids and grandkids nearby, the youngest three. Um, that we, you know, where they were little, like one to four at the time. So we, we chose Laguna Woods because of the church and the body that you represented. And um, so it was a hard time taking care of Janice, but the last uh, 10 months, she's been a, in a boarding care, having deteriorated in her ability to get around and uh, functionality and had another stroke and she's just three miles away and so it's been sucked my life out so to speak and I've adjusted slowly and we value we, well. we, we love and appreciate Janice and it, it, for those of you watching Steve and Janice they always, basically sat I think in the as you walked in the front door the first table yeah, the second and, table, right by the rows of chairs. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just trying to help people picture and, yeah. But go ahead. Yeah. So We've you, been married 55 years, and uh, we have four married kids, 10 grandkids. And uh, one, the oldest, lives in Colorado Springs with three, two of which are Biola students. One just graduated, one's a sophomore and a 12-year-old girl, and they're coming tonight, in fact. Well, you are very blessed, and yeah. that's, that's amazing. Yeah. I want you to move on to the, the books that have been a blessing to you. Okay. Either both just now or in your life. I taught a men's Bible study for 35 years every week in Visalia before we moved here. And we started going through books, and our favorite author that we went through many books was Timothy Keller, 
And this book was his first book we used. And it just reshifted my thinking on, on why do we learn about God? The reason for God. It's not to learn. It's to change us and to change those around us. And uh, that was a very, very good book. And then my favorite little book he wrote was this one. And it's a story about the prodigal son. And uh, it called the prodigal God. And because God showed us the lesson, there's two ways to miss going to the party. One is do everything right and have no heart. That's the eldest son. And one is do everything wrong and be repentant. That's the prodigal son. Well, only one to the party. I honestly have read other things by Tim Keller. I have not read those, but I'm motivated to order them. And I'm sure that I get most of my books. And folks, I know if you're at home, this alone is profitable to you. Those are great books. I have no doubt about it. If Steve is recommending them, I have no problem recommending them also. Uh, But Amazon is one easy way, but I also use Christian book distributors. And so they will ship if you, with them, you have, well, I guess both of them. You got to order like over $30 or 35. But, uh, But both of those are two good ones. But this other one that, tell us about this other thing that you've been involved with for for a long time. And I love that we get to share this today. Yeah, 15 years this has been a project uh, that God has burdened me with. And it's Jesus Christ, The Greatest Life. That's the title of one publication. But the author, um, Johnston Cheney. Johnston Cheney. How do you spell the last name? C-H-E-N-E-Y. Okay. And... um, He spent 23 years memorizing the first four Gospels in Greek. And without adding or deleting one word in Greek, he assimilated them into one continuous chronological narrative, taking into account the feasts and the seasons and the time to travel from one place to the other. And um, it's true scripture from that viewpoint. It's not just blah, blah, blah. And it just made me realize if I don't love and understand Jesus as my savior, as a person in the gospels, what good does it read the epistles that tell about Jesus? I want to read about his life. This is one of the more unique books that I have read. I have read this book. When I first met Steve, he gave me a copy. And I have so appreciate it. I certainly have it right here. And uh, it's a, so if you, just to reemphasize, it's the four gospels put together, considering in a chronological order based on years and years of study of the original language that I, it seems totally accurate to me. And it's been- it's been peer reviewed by a friend of mine who is president of Western Seminary, Dr. Rodmarker. He put his Christology professor in charge for three years to review the work and to validate it was truly uh, what it claims to be. And the first printing was called uh, The Life of Christ in Stereo. It was done by uh, a Western Seminary Press. So if you need a book to read, yeah. well, Steve's given you three good choices uh but this last one if you it's a unique uh god it's the bible really it's the bible put together the life of christ so look it up on amazon get it uh steve shockingly but our time is already up oh i know it's shocking good insight as always i love talking with you i appreciate you so much Thanks for being on. God bless. Love you. Bye, everyone.